Hello, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to explain the kidneys and how they work. Now, firstly, I'll just touch on a couple of waste products that we've looked at before. Carbon dioxide is a waste product of respiration, which is removed by the lungs when we breathe out. Urea is another waste product, which is produced when we break down protein, and it's removed by the kidneys in this process I'm going to explain now. So, this simple diagram here just shows the bloodstream on this side and the kidney here, okay? So imagine we've got the blood vessels running through the kidney. In reality, it's much more complicated than this, but you don't just need to know the structure of the kidney. So this is fine for our um, intents here, okay? So, the materials that are in the blood, we're looking at things like amino acids, which are indicated AA, We'll have glucose, which will indicate as a G. We'll have water, which will indicate as H2O. We'll have proteins, which I'll show as a P. And we'll also have some ions and salts, which I'll just indicate as like Na+, which I'll um, indicate for salts. Now what happens is, initially, everything that can fit out of the blood and into the kidney moves into the kidney. So um, this is called filtration. So all the materials that can fit through, do fit through. So amino acids move through, because they're small. Glucose moves through. Water moves through. And salts move through. Now protein can't fit through into the kidney because it's too large to fit through those membranes. So protein will remain in the blood. Okay? So if there's protein in your urine, that could be a sign that you've got some kidney problems. So all these materials have entered the kidney and then they'll travel through the kidney. Now, obviously we don't want to lose all of these materials because a lot of them are useful and help us survive. Because everything that remains in the kidney after this process will then be released as urine. So we've got our salts, we've got our water, we've got our glucose, and we've got our amino acids. Now, what happens is all, all of the glucose is reabsorbed. So it's a key point that word reabsorb means reabsorbed back into our blood so it can be carried around our body. Another key point is that all of the glucose is filtered out of the blood here. So all of the glucose in our blood moves into the kidney originally there. Okay? Um, all of the amino acids are reabsorbed into our blood. The amount of salts that we need is reabsorbed. So not all of the salts, our body will know the amount it needs to reabsorb back into the blood. And also, the amount of water we need will be reabsorbed back into the blood. So all that should be remaining is some urea and some water and some salts that aren't reabsorbed. Okay? And all of these products left in the kidney will then go to the bladder and then be released as urine. So we need to reabsorb a lot of these products. Now just a key point about water. Something that I've seen on quite a lot of past paper questions is that they link the amount of water reabsorbed to the environmental conditions. Okay, let's think about it. So on a hot day, like today, um, you'll be sweating more, which means that you lose more water just generally throughout the day. And this means that when we get to this point here, you're going to reabsorb more water into the blood. That's because we don't want to lose that water in urine. So they might give you some data on that and ask you to interpret and explain why is our urine more concentrated and more yellow on a hot day than a cold day. The reason for that is because more water is reabsorbed into the blood and less water is lost as urine. So that's the function of the kidneys. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Rushcliffe Bio. Thank you.